this church, pastor, pastor wife, and each and every one of you, your prayers, your friendship, and your support through the years mean so much to Shelly and I and to the ministry back home in Suriname, South America. I want to truly thank you for giving to the Lord. I was listening to Pastor Todd, I was thinking, wow, it's all because of American missionary that leave this country and has traveled to many parts of the world. There are many Muslims and Hindus saved by God's grace. Right. And people from many other religious backgrounds, all saved because of the blood that was shed. Amen. And now they may not get an opportunity, but I'm telling you, they're all there serving God. Yes, sir. In Suriname right now, like he was saying, 150 years ago, the Indonesian Muslim came to Suriname. And they were very, very strong Muslim. They, they formed their own community. They want nothing to do with Christianity or no other religion. And for generation to generation, they are Muslims. And you know that Indonesia right now has the largest population of Muslims in the world. And now we have a guy that came to Calvary and got saved. And he's behind the pulpit of Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. A Muslim. And then we have another one that is a Muslim that fills in when he can't make it. So it is, it's all because of God's grace. Right. Grace, Amen. grace. Yes, sir. You have your Bible there. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk has just three chapters. And we want to go to Habakkuk chapter number three. It's very easy to find. If you find the book of Malachi, just flip back a few pages and you will find the book of Habakkuk. This Sunday morning, I want to take this couple minutes here and preach a message entitled, Yet. And here we'll have the words here, and I'll explain to you, Yet, most of you that are English teacher or study the English language will know that it's, a, it's an adverb or a conjunction, and, and it means in spite of, right. and, or, but for all, that, or nevertheless, you will have the word yet. In Habakkuk chapter number 3, let me give an example before we read the verse of scripture here. Job said that he is the God of my salvation. And because he is the God of my salvation, the God who delivered me from the bondage of sin, he said, and because of that fact, Job said in that famous verse of scripture that we have read and heard so many times, he said, though he slay me, yet, Amen. use that word, yet, right. though he slay me, yet, I will trust in him. Why? Because Job explained to us, he is the God of my salvation. Amen. And because I am free from sins, and because he has saved my soul, I have a place prepared in the Father house of many mansions. Right. I will reign with him forever yes, and ever. Right. So though he slay me right now in this body, and this man was going through a lot of medical problems during that time. He said, though he slay me, yet I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. Right. Yet I will trust yeah. in him. As a matter of fact, he, his wife said, well, God is done with you. Why don't you just give up on God? And he said to his wife that, um, I want God to know something about me. I want God to know that my integrity, my trust is in him and him only. Yeah. Here in the Bible, the Bible tells us here in the book of Hab Habakkuk chapter number 3. I want to read verse number 17 and, and stop there. If you have it there, let's all stand and, and see it. If you can stand, stand. Habakkuk chapter number 3. Look at this verse here, verse number 17. It's quite interesting, three chapters he wrote there. But here in 17, he said, Although the fig trees shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the style. So let's read it together. One, two, three. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd 
in the stalls. Lord, we thank you for the reading of thy word. We pray your Holy Spirit blessing upon the preaching of thy word. In Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. You may take your seats. If we were to stop there, and if Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk were to complete there in verse number 17, Habakkuk would have ended, the book of Habakkuk would have ended in such a very sad, sad, very sad state. But glory be to God. Glory be to God. Praise God. The book of Habakkuk did not end there. Right. It did not end with, 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 with chapter number 3 and verse number 17. There is still yet verse number 18 and verse number 19. Amen. And Habakkuk tells us this word. He said, yet, when everything is falling to pieces. Right, yes. And when I don't understand why all this is happening, Habakkuk said, yet there is something in him that is so deep Amen. that he would say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yes. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yes, this is the one who I trust in. This is the one who saved me. He said, the Lord, the Lord God is my strength. Whoa, you arrive in America. And, and people come to me and say, whisper, you know, I'll tell you, Pastor Tom, oh, how are you doing? I say, why are you whispering, man? Well, I heard, I heard some bad news. I said, what bad news you heard? Muhammad is still alive. Yes, and Muhammad cannot die. Amen. So what bad news are you hearing? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Listen, you, I cannot die. Right. Right. Because I have the gift of everlasting life. Yes. Right. Yes. Like Pastor Stott was saying, when we have been there 10,000 years, that's a lot of years. Yeah. Right? So, he is saying this. He said, I, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. No. I love, you know, Pastor Stott, every time I come to this United States of America, it's special. Something is always happening when I arrive at Miami. I arrived at Miami and Shelly said, man, we haven't been in the country for over a year. You think we'll have a problem with immigration? I said, Shelly, we can't. And Shelly said, why? Why, Mohammed? Why do you say we're not going to have a problem with immigration? Because our visa stipulate that we have to travel within six months. Now we have been in the country, we have been in Suriname over a year because of all the tests and so forth. I said, Shelly, look on the wall there. Look at the wall, see what you see. And Shelly looked at the wall and she said, Mohammed, I don't get it. I said, look there. There was Joe Biden. <laughs> and there was Maracas. The guy from Home of Security. They're both side to side. We're good to go. <laughs> We're coming through legal. Yeah. The, guy, the guy was so happy to interview Mohammed, coming through legal. First time he was so happy. He stopped me working. He didn't ask any question. He was excited that we were coming through legal in the country. So I said, man, from the, from the airport, I am blessed. <laughs> then I arrived here, and, and um, I went to church and said, oh, I'm glad you're in the country. I'm glad you're in the country because I have a list. I said, I have a list too. I carry my list. You carry your list. You have a list. You have a list. We all have a list. My country, USA, USA, USA. Number one. And number two on my list is border, border, border. <laughs> number three on my list is the economy, Mohammed, the economy, the economy, the economy. And number four, prices, prices, prices. Number five on my list, doctor, 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 test, 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 stress, stress, stress. And our list goes on, right? You have your list. I have my list. And if we were to compare, although I'm from Suriname, if you take your list and bring your list and I compare my list with your list, guess what? It's the same. Basically, it's the same. It's the same. It is the same. But the Bible is telling us here that Habakkuk, who was not an angel, he was not superhuman, he was just a human being that loved God, and the Bible is telling us that Habakkuk is telling us when everything seems to be falling to pieces right in front of his eyes. Habakkuk said, yet, nevertheless, this is 
what I'm going to do. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hannah tells us these words. Hannah said, I will rejoice in my salvation. Mary said, I will rejoice in the God. And he's also my savior. Thomas said, he is my Lord and he is my God. Right. Therefore, I will rejoice. Yep. Moses said, oh, this is what Moses said. He's glorious in holiness. He's fearful in praise. And he is the God that does wonders. He is a wonder-working God. Amen. The God of the impossible. Yet he said, I will rejoice in the Lord. We sing it. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Sing it to me. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Because of the God of my salvation, nothing can take that away from me. Amen. Because he said, and though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust in him. Yeah. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to rejoice in his name. And Habakkuk said, yet when everything falls into pieces, I am going to rejoice in the Lord. I will serve the Lord with gladness. He came to Suriname when he was very young. American. I never knew him much here in the United States. But when he arrived in Suriname, we got really close. He decided he wants to go to the radio station here. He was a young preacher here, so he went with me to the radio station. I realized then that he could sing. I realized then that he could preach. I realized then that he could play many instruments of music. I said, what? I said, what's going on? What else can you not do? And then he told me, guess what? <coughs> I was going to go to Hollywood and make movies. And then I really looked at him. He was that good looking. <laughs> he was. Man, Tom Cruise, you don't have anything on this guy. The guy was really good looking. I have to tell the ladies in Suriname, he's married and he has three kids. <laughs> Stay away from him. Well, we got close and he came back to the United States and Dick Shelley and I on 301. And there on 301, acres and acres of bushes on 301, Highway 301 in Tanatonasa, if I say it right. And he said to Shelley, he said, Shelley, what do you think? He always liked Shelley. More than me. I don't know why people like Shelley more than me. I do all the preaching and singing, and they always like Shelley more than me. I come to this church and I like Shelley more than me. But he said to Shelley, he took us to this all these acres of bushes, and he said, Shelley, Miss Shelley, what do you think? I'm going to build a church here. I'm going to buy this land. We look around, and there was no houses, none whatsoever. And Shelley said, if God lead you to do it, do it. He said, but well, Michelle, I have so much opposition because the church I'm, I'm pastoring right now, I will sell that building we're going to sell and move over here. Shelly said, God, do you for you? Do it. He did it. He was just waiting for that confirmation. And then after he talked to Shelly, then he talked to me. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what he did. And then we went to, we went to Suriname, came back. He started a church there. 
if you ever visited, if you're in Tenatanasa, 301, Fellowship Baptist Church. He moved the trees and he built it, Fellowship Baptist Church. It's packed out. I think right now they're having three different services. The amount of people that's going there, children, people all over. He was so talented. He writes his own song. He's a good preacher and all of that. Married three children, three sons. He said, Mohammed, my first mission trip with my boys will be to Suriname. I love you. I love Suriname. I love the people. There's some connection with him and Suriname. We love him. I, I would go to his church and I would slip in just to hear him preach. Because I want to hear him preach. But I would slip in late Wednesday night. And for some reason, he said, oh, Muhammad, I saw you. You were coming in late. But guess what? You'll be preaching. And I, you know, I always have to prepare because he's always coming to preach. But years after everything was going well, wife and three kids, he had cancer. He had six cancer balls in his brains. And the doctor said, you have six months. To live. You know, he lived exactly six months after that. Yeah. But he lost weight, he lost his hair. He, he, but he used that six months. He's going to colleges now where the young people are. He went to the college where, where Rachel was in a wheelchair. No hair got so thin, but talking about Jesus Christ at all the, the Bible colleges around Florida. And my flight canceled. And so I said, let me go and hear him preach. Because I realized this might be the last time I'll hear him preach. And so I went and I was sitting right there and he started to preach. And he used the verse in, in Hebrews. He used the verse in Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6. You remember the verse? But without faith, it is impossible to believe him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he's God yeah. and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek. He, he came through the door after the singing and I didn't get to speak to him, but he watched me. He was there and he watched me and there was that smile and my smile. And he said, he said to me, I, I see you, Mohammed. And I said to him, I see you too. And it was time for him to preach. He started to preach. And as he started to preach, blood. All of a sudden, he started spewing out of his nose and mouth, and he started to bleed. You think he would stop? No, no, he didn't stop. A lady came by, and she brought, she brought a tissue. I have a few here. She brought a, a tissue and gave it to him. And he wiped off this blood on his nose and mouth. And he continued on as if nothing is happening to him. And there's blood now all his, on, his, on his clothes and Tissue upon tissue upon tissue upon tissue. And I sit there and I watch blood on seven different tissues in this short message that you preach. But he refused to stop preaching. And he wanted to preach to the end. Yet, when everything is falling to pieces, when nothing seems to be going right, I am going to go and preach the word. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. Those are the times, beloved, yeah. when God is watching you. Yeah. Those are the times when God is looking to see what you're really made of. Can you go back in time and see Job in the dumpster? God lost everything. And this man had a lot. And he lost all his children. Then he lost his health. His health is failing now. Can you go back and see Job in that dumpster? And he's saying to God, because you are the God of my salvation, and you deliver me from sin, though you slay me, yet I'm going to trust in him. What a message he sent to God. He said to God, do what you want to do with me. But here I am. I'm not going anywhere. I will rejoice in thee. And I will serve thee. How easily we got discouraged. Huh? And how easily we want to stay home. 
Larry will play the piano. I go to a church by the University of South Florida. Larry was big. Big Larry, I call him. Larry don't have a shirt that goes around him because it's difficult to get his shirt button here. Larry is big Larry. But Larry is one, Larry will make this piano speak. Bam, bam, bam. You see Larry in the piano. There's something about Larry in this piano when he plays in church. Larry will play and enjoy himself. And he got moves too when he's playing. Larry got moves. Larry got a lot of moves. He's kind of big, but he got a lot of moves. You know? So I, I, I watch Larry many times and say, I hope that chair is, is, is strong enough to hold him. But I came back to the United States and Larry was in Tampa General. So the pastor and I went to Tampa General, the hospital. And there is Larry. Larry's in his bed, he's hooked up with all kind of cable here and there. I, I've never seen a guy hooked up with so many cables. But Harry's going, oh, and he's swabbing, yeah, Bobby, come, 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 give me all. I hug Larry. And here, Larry, Larry, Larry said, Bobby, let me, let me have a word of prayer. For, I, I went to pray for Larry. Bobby, let me have a word of prayer for you. There's Larry, Larry hooked up with all these things, going like this, and he's willing to pray for me. And that, those are the kind of examples that give me strength and cause me to serve him even more. The example of the Bible and men like that. Last Thursday, last Wednesday, sorry, Shelly and I went to visit a friend of mine, Paul Rito, 92 years old, faithful in one Baptist church for over 50 years. Was never a preacher, never a Sunday school teacher, but he was just love to do what the pastor asked him to do. The bulletin, the little this and little that, little the visitation, passing out tracks. And so I went, I went three weeks ago and saw him. And, and, and the guy said, he will not recognize you. I said, let's go. I will see. I walk in the room. I say, hey, Paul. And Paul said, hey, Mohammed, it's you. And we had a great time. I see no Mohammed. I sing for him. I laugh at him and, and, and so forth. Then Shelly and I went back there. Last Wednesday, and there is, there is, there is um, Paul Whitfield again, 92 years old, on that bed. And he started to sing, and he recognized, and, and he's talking a little, and, and he wants to sing, and, and, and tears and coming out his eyes, and bam! Saturday morning, we, we got a call that he passed away. But, but it, it, it's in my mind that here is this man, 92 years old. Served God for all these years in one Baptist church, over 50 years. And love the Lord. And decide, I'm not moving. Because he's the God of my salvation. I remember David Redmond when I went to see him in Lakeland. I took a U-turn. That's the best U-turn I ever took. I heard he was sick and I took a U-turn and I went in. And there is David on the bed. And we sing, David and I. And I preach. I use all the verses I could think about in the Bible. And David sing, And all of a sudden I see here tears of joy running down. And I went home and, and in a few days David passed away. I think of Big John in Arcadia. I call him Big John because he was big. And he said, Mohammed, if ever... You're in the country. I'm going to die when you're in the country. I said, well, how, how, how are you going to do that? He said, Mohammed, I'm going to die when you're in the country. And I want you to come and preach my funeral. Do you know Big John died when I was in the country? I just came in the country and Big John died. And the pastor said, hey, Mohammed, where are you? I said, I just arrived. He said, well, you got to come and preach Big John funeral. He passed away and he always wanted you to come and preach it. I went to Arcadia, and there's Big John in the gospel, and I said, come on now, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, John is with the Lord. People almost fainted. <laughs> the funeral director said, man, when are you coming back? I said, why? He said, you, you're a breath of fresh air. <laughs> because you come here with all this excitement, Big John is not here. Big John is with the Lord, of course he's the Lord. The Bible tells us that. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. How many times? Always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. I like that. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let some joy come in your life because he's the God of our salvation. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Paul said, in everything, 
Look at that. In everything, give thanks. That's, that's difficult. That's very difficult to do. In everything he said, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. But what about my list, Muhammad? What about my list? What about my doctor appointment? What about the tests, all these tests that I have to take? What about all this stress? What about this? What about this? What about that? What about that? Well, I can show you my list too. I can show you my list too. I have a list too. So what about your, what about my list? But as Christians, as believers, born again, he said in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. So what am I going to do with my list? Well, I'll be back this afternoon here to preach. Bring your list. And I'll take mine. And I'll take yours. And I'll get past the third. And we'll burn it. Let's have a burning sermon. It happened in the book of Acts. They were willing to bring the things that were not of God and burn it. I believe sometimes you need to do that, you know. Don't play games with God. Go in that house and look in all those bedrooms, all those hidden places you have, magazines or whatever you have, and bring it, take it to the back there, and let us burn them. You know what happened? I went back this morning and I looked at that burning sermon. They bring what they had that were not of God. And they were willing to burn their list. And in the book of Acts, go back and read. After the burning, after the burning, you know what happened? The word of God grew mightily. I think that was holy. Something our list is, is quenching the spirit of God to move in our life. And we have to let go. Let go and let God come in and take full control. And then you can say, I will rejoice like Habakkuk. Shake it off. And I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Every day. Every day is a good day to joy in the God of my salvation. In everything, give thanks. For this, he said, is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So what is the will of God? What is the will of God? Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord. And when you get a little tired, give more thanks unto the Lord. Because he deserves all the glory, all the praise, right. and all the thanks. Resort, rejoice, he said, rejoice forevermore. He is the God of my salvation. You know, a lot of times we preach on that, that um, book there concerning Hezekiah. And we all rejoice that God gifted Hezekiah. 15 more years. But let me wrap up here with telling you what happened. When Hezekiah heard that he was going to die, and Hezekiah realized, man, I don't want to die now, you know. I want, I want uh, some more years. Back in Suriname, the surgeon said, oh, Mohammed, blah, blah, blah. I said, hold on there. Stop it right there. I don't have time for all that negativity. He said, Mohammed, all oh, the treatment. Can I said, okay, do what you have to do. Don't mess with my hair because I don't have much. <laughs> You're going to give me chemo chemotherapy and all that. Then he said, oh, oh, Mohammed, this. I said, don't Mohammed me, man. <laughs> my God is with me. Don't Mohammed me and tell me, but Mohammed is Mohammed. I have to live. I have some daughters. I have some granddaughters. They're not married yet. You think I want to die and left Shelly alone? No, 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 no. I'm not going anywhere. I was in a church just two weeks ago and the guy said, um, I have a hole already dug. I said, well, keep it clean and tidy. 
<laughs> with a hot, I had stone on, the, on it, and um, I love the guy's sense of humor. Keep it clean, keep the whole clean and tidy. Buy a new head, head stone and put it here, and put Mohammed is not here. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about this another time. But I'm not ready right now. But look at what Hezekiah did. Listen carefully. When he turned his back to the wall and prayed, you ever, you ever read his prayer? He said, Oh God. He's telling God, I, Hezekiah, I serve thee. Look at the word, in truth. This man was not playing. I serve thee in truth. And listen to what he said also. I serve thee, O God, with a perfect heart. And then he said, and I have done, O God, that which is right in thy sight. But think about that. Think about that. He said to God, I serve thee in truth, number one. Number two, I serve thee with a perfect heart. And number three, he said these words, I serve thee and I have done that which is good in thy sight. No wonder, man, no wonder God extended and given him 15 years. No wonder. And here Mary said, oh man, I pray like Hezekiah, but nothing's happening to me. Well, <laughs> look at what Hezekiah is saying to God. I serve thee in truth. I serve thee with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is right in thy sight. Three things he said to God. He said this to God. And no wonder God extended his life. When everything is falling away. When everything is falling away, let us rejoice in the God of our salvation. Let us jump, dance, and sing. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. What a great and mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. I love heaven. And this is what I will do. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. Bring it on. Bring it on. That is what Job is saying. What else? What else can you hit me with? What else can you hit me with? You have done this and done that. What else? Bring it on. And he said, Yet. I'm going to trust in thee, O oh God. Though you slay. Though you slay. Though you slay. May God give us that Holy Spirit attitude. Amen. To say, oh man, Mohammed, I'm going to dance with you. And I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Cliff Frank died. Leaving a young wife. And three young sons lived six months after that. And he was very young. He's not even 40 when he died. But what I remember most about this friend is that last message he preached. With blood spewing, bag in hand, and seven paper towel could not quench the blood that was coming through his mouth. And his nose. Yet. He's sending a message to you and I. Yet. I will rejoice. In the Lord. I will joy. In the God. Of my salvation. That's the only thing.